theology. Uh, Brother Muhammad uh, from Aberdeen, Scotland emails. MashaAllah, Aberdeen, Scotland, one of the northernmost city, very beautiful city. I've had the pleasure of going there once in my life. Uh, I've been to Glasgow and Edinburgh many more times, but Aberdeen up north. Brother Muhammad from Aberdeen emails and he says that he has a question about the famous hadith of the one who killed 99 people but was eventually forgiven by Allah. He says that he understands that Allah's mercy is infinite and indeed it is possible for Allah to forgive everyone. But he says, how about the justice for the 99 families and the murdered? Where is the justice? He says, I can understand Allah's forgiveness. What about the people who were murdered? How can that be understood in light of this hadith? Where is their haqq uh, for uh, the rights that were taken away from them? in light of this hadith. Now, this hadith uh, is a famous hadith is reported in Bukhari and Muslim. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there used to be a man amongst the people before you who killed 99 people. And he regretted that and he wanted to repent. So he asked, who is the most knowledgeable person? So he was guided to a monk. A monk is a worshiper who doesn't have any knowledge. And he said to the monk, I have killed 99 people. Will Allah ever forgive me? And the man said, 99 people, how can Allah ever forgive you? You are doomed. So he became so angry that he killed the monk and made 100. And then he became uh, repentant again. And so he then approached a scholar and he asked the scholar, can Allah ever forgive me? And the scholar said, and who can possibly come between you and Allah's forgiveness? Of course, Allah will forgive you. But then he said to him, you are living in an evil land, go to a righteous place. And the long story short, he went to that place and on the way he died. And eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgave him. Now, the brother is saying, he understands the forgiveness. He does not understand the concept of justice. And the response is that, on the Day of Judgment, our Prophet ﷺ told us that uh, people, those types of people who have done wrong unto others, and especially those who have killed, because our Prophet ﷺ said that a person is going to be in a state of ease. There's always going to be hope for a person on the Day of Judgment unless he has shed the blood of somebody else. And our Prophet Sallallahu said, the first issue that Allah will deal with on the day of, day of Judgment is blood. If somebody has shed blood, that is gonna be the first issue Allah deals with in the court of the divine on the Day of Judgment. And the long list of crimes, number one, uh, in terms of the crimes between mankind is, you know, the, those that have killed lots of people, war criminals, whatnot, you know, mass murderers, they were gonna be judged number one. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that on that day, dhulm uh, is going to be taken to, into account and the currency between the dhalim and the mavloom, the currency between the one who did dhulm and the one upon whom it was done will be the currency of good and bad deeds. So the one who did dhulm will be forced to give his good deeds to the one that he did the dhulm to until he runs out of good deeds. Then bad deeds from the mavloom will be given to the one who did the dhulm until all accounts are settled. And our Prophet wasallam mentioned the case of uh, the one who is a bankrupt person. He, he said, do you know who is the uh, bankrupt person? And they said, uh, the bankrupt person is the one who has run out of all money. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, the bankrupt person in my, uh, uh, on the day of judgment from my ummah will be the one who comes with good deeds like mountains. Yet he also has done dhulm into many people and he has killed people and hurt people and backbited people and slandered people and stolen from people. And so on that day, the good deeds that he's done will be given to all of these other people until he runs out of all of his good deeds. He said, that is the bankrupt person. So now our brother asked the question, how do we understand this hadith? And the response is very simple. One of two ways. Number one, that the default is that the sinner who does not repent or even who repented imperfectly shall be forced to deal with the sin that he has done unto others. Because again, we're talking about the sin that was done to other people by giving his good deeds. So it is possible that Allah might have forgiven this murder. And so Allah will not punish him for what he has done. But this murder might come on the day of judgment and become bankrupt 
in light of the 99 or 100 claimants he has to settle. And it is possible that because of that, he might be punished. But eventually, he will go to Jannah because how long will you remain for the punishments, you know, for the sins of this world? And then there is a second alternative. And that is that Allah Azza wa Jal accepts the repentance of such a person to such a level that Allah will directly recompense the, those upon whom dhulm was done from his account and not from the account of the one who did dhulm. So in the end, the justice will be settled in the court of Allah by the rights of the mazloom being given to that person. And now whether the one who has done dhulm will be forgiven or not, it depends on his repentance. And this gives us hope because there are people amongst us who have done dhulm unto others and those people are now gone from their lives. We don't know where they are anymore. What can we do? Well, we can make dua for them, give charity on their behalf, but we really are guilty. We're very repentant. What else can we do? We can turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show our remorse and regret, make, for, ask Allah for forgiveness and a sincere, sincere, sincere repentance from Allah will be so powerful that on the day of judgment, such a person will even be forgiven the huquq against others, but they will not walk away empty handed. They will walk away with rewards from Allah directly, which will be even more than what this man could have given them from his own good deeds. And so they will leave happy. And Allah Azza wa Jal, because of the repentance of the sinner, will allow the sinner to be forgiven. And this shows us that the door of mercy of Allah and the rahmah of Allah and the generosity of Allah is beyond our account. And the point of this is to make us feel a sense of optimism and hope, no matter what sin we have done, even against other people, the doors of mercy are still open. If we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we sincerely show Allah we are guilty, we are, we, are, we are turning to Him with our good deeds, we're turning to Him with our ikhlas and sincerity, we're asking for His forgiveness. The more that we do in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more the chances are that even those uh, deeds will be forgiven, even if they're involved the rights of other people. And in fact, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, hadith is in Bukhari, that Allah is amazed in one hadith, Allah laughs at two people, the killer and the killed, and yet they are eating together in Jannah, they're drinking together in Jannah. Each one of them in this world, their animosity and hatred was so bad that one of them killed the other, but it is possible that the one who killed was a non-Muslim who repented, he accepted Islam, so the one who was killed becomes a shaheed. The killer is forgiven because he embraced Islam, and so in, Jed in Jannah they're together. In Jannah they're together, and in this world, the one of them killed the other, and that's each one will end up with the good deeds based upon what they have done. So all of this is to underscore that insha'Allah ta'ala, if we turn to Allah and are sincere and perfect our repentance, then the doors to Rahmah are always open. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to guide us and to make us of those who are in Jannah for those al-Ala. Insha'Allah, I will see you in our next uh, episode next week. Jazakumullah khair.